Hello, my name is Colin Doyle, and I'm a senior FD for Juniper Networks. And today, I'm going to provide a logical overview of the lab that I have built for my SRX cluster failover testing. If you haven't watched that series of videos, I would actually recommend watching this one first. It's good for context. Uh, uh, the videos themselves do use this design as their architecture in every case. Uh, and if you've gone through and you're still waiting for failure scenario four, I'll be recording that this, uh, this coming week. So right here in front of us, this is the design. Uh, I think we're probably about four or five iterations of this before I find the one that I was happy with. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this one. So in this case, I'm trying to replicate a common uh, branch firewall cluster failover scenario where I've got a pair of here at the bottom physical VSRX 340s, actually right here by my left knee right now as I record this. Uh, the cluster together, uh, southbound, I've got a pair of ex 4200s as a perspective as a virtual chassis using a combination of redundant Ethernet coming out of the SRXs and link aggregation control protocol to provide uh, diverse multiple paths across both of the SRX cluster nodes. Uh, it's very highly available in this type of, uh, this type of design uh, for the LAN side of things. Northbound, I have this VMX1 and VMX2. These are sort of my pseudo ISP links and kind of pretend internet transit between my branch and my core, which in this case is being represented by this single VSRX1-1 uh, device here. That is a VSRX or close RX. Uh, can't really cluster them. I didn't need clustering the core to test this, so I've just been using the one. Northbound up to each of these ISPs, I have a single link. One plugs in each of these uh, nodes that makes this an active active cluster. That just means that I've got a active control plane and an active data plane. Active control plane that's always only on one device. But I have an active data plane on both nodes. Uh, the one consideration you might have here, if you're considering you know, one to do this kind of design, is that there is going to be a certain there can be a certain amount of rerouting as traffic comes in through this link here and crosses this cluster link, this data fabric link, over to where the control plane is or where was one of the, you know, the links downstream. In this case, these links are active. Uh, these are not. So anything that would come in through this VMX2 path would have to actually cross over. If these links were active and traffic came in here and it was going southbound, it actually wouldn't uh, trombone through node zero. But it's just a consideration. If you have questions about how that might impact your design, you know, talk to your local Juniper expert, talk to your, uh, your SD, talk to your partner. Uh, there, are, there are reasons to do that. There are reasons you might want to avoid it, uh, and there's some considerations in either case. Moving on, the you know I've got BGP peering going here between these two devices, and then of course from these devices up into this VSX one. I'm also running a GRE tunnel across this link uh, and across this link, so that I have a peer going from this SRX cluster. Remember, single control plane, so don't think that this is, you know, peering with node zero and node one. It's just peering with where the control plane is, which by default is going to be node zero in my design. Uh, and then coming back up here to be source one uh, across these different paths. And that allows me to pin traffic to a certain path uh, based on where I define my next hop, whether it's this tunnel here or this tunnel here. And I'm doing that through a combination of AS prepending and local preference. Um, on the VSRX1 and the SRX cluster. That way I know I have control over where my paths are. And so when I do a failover, uh, I know that I am not already on the link that I think I'm failing over to. And when you think about what I am failing over, it is this. So at the start of every test, this is this blue line represents the connection that I've made from the test PC, which is the one I'm on right now, up to the Windows box that's in the other room, which is this test PC in the upper left hand corner. This is my outbound ping. This is my RDP session, and the ping that's coming back from the test PC uh, to the box, you know, from the laptop I'm in front of. When I fail over, I am essentially failing over to this link here. So all the times that you see, based on the scenario, it's just the amount of time it takes for this blue line to move over to this side. And that's the long and short of it. Uh, Feel free to take a screenshot here. I will, like I said, do deep dives on all these configs at a later time on other videos. But for now, I wanted to get the logical design out of the way just so you have a reference point if you're going through the cluster failovers. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Any requests, do the same. And I will see you in future videos.